All right. Thanks, Don. So, yeah, this is this is a, a question that we just wanted to, to kick off with and would love to hear your or read your comments in, in the chats. But I'm just really curious how all of the people here are currently supporting a digital learning culture. And of course, things have gotten more uh, interesting in, in recent <laughs> and has uh, pushed pushed this on. But Don, I don't know if you're if you're wanting to get answers now or if we're going to collect those until we're going to we're gonna, what we'll do is we're going to do something very difficult, which is stop talking. <laughs> very tricky. And we're going to let multiple people respond. Lee Taylor comes straight out of the blocks. How do you supporting a digital learning culture poorly? Let's just uh, let's give it a, a few seconds to start things coming through. Lee says poorly, but we've got different different options coming through here. So. People are talking about, OK, so there's a variety of answers here I'm getting through already. Firstly, people are saying it's, it's difficult to, to support um, your culture, OK? Um, and so Lee is one person saying that. Other people are talking straight away about the, about the, the, the actual tools they're using. Brian relates some tools, Ian, uh, Julie, other people, particular emphasis on Zoom, I think. Ian Nick's talking about Zoom as well. WebEx says Jillian. Charlotte's talking about SharePoint. Um, uh, but other people are talking, as well as the technology, about the, uh, the, the, the way they do it. So Sean is talking about involving and just adopted uh, teams. Um, but, there is, but there's some, I, I get the sense here, looking at this, some, some hesitation. Somebody saying, it's awful, we've just had to figure it out for ourselves. Um, a lot of people talking about, Rex, Rex says, we're in our infancy, Skype for Business. Julian saying, Microsoft Teams, but people getting overloaded. Um, there are challenges, reports Joe, um, within the NHS. Uh, how do we make breakout rooms and customs you know, um, within the NHS? Uh, how do we make breakout rooms and customs, uh, how to make things interactive? So there's a lot of, um, there's, if I, what I'm getting here, and thank you for all these thoughts, by the way, everybody. This is. This is absolutely invaluable as a sense check. And, and I hope if you're saying, I'm finding it difficult, that you realize you're not alone here, because you're not, please. Um, Vanessa just says, in capitals, a lot of work. I think we hear your pain, Vanessa. Um, your Teams is hopeless for training, says Brian. Maybe it is, but maybe it's not hopeless for learning. And it may be different things. Um, and a lot of people are using a niece's phrase, there's been a steep learning curve. OK, um, so I think there's a lot going on here, but three themes that I'm seeing. Firstly, people saying it's difficult to deal with the culture. Secondly, people focusing on the tools. And thirdly, some people saying there's a real emphasis here on the, the need to, 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 do, to do more and use these tools better. And, and people getting a sense that they are irritated, struggling with it. And I think, again, coming back to Vanessa's sense, there's a lot of work going on here. Right, so look, <clears throat> guys, is that the, I'll hand it back to you, but Travis, is that the reaction you're expecting? Yeah, that sounds, that sounds pretty, uh, pretty par for the course. And uh, I know that, the, of course, we're going we're gonna to give an example of, of what can be done within Teams here today. Um, and I guess I'll just get started, Don, then, so that, that we can maximize our time. Absolutely. We've got loads of people here. That, that they, they're keen to hear it, so let's okay. crack on. Perfect. Now, what I like to do is uh, I like to start off with the why very briefly uh, because I have conversations all day, every day with people within the learning and development community. And I find this, this uh, uh, top opportunity is that's coming up time and time again is building a learning culture and somehow supporting a digital learning culture, a collaborative learning culture. And uh, this is what, what it all kind of boils down to. And the way that that's then being supported is by a digital transformation of some type. And this looks different in every organization. Some might be, uh, be there already. Some might be just planning on how to move digital. And, and of course, now with the current COVID-19 scenario, people have been thrust into a burning platform that they need to do everything digitally. And then the third is uh, the, the concept of relevance or learning the flow of work, of being able to provide the relevant material at the relevant time in the relevant place. 
And I think personally that Microsoft Teams is, is a fantastic opportunity to achieve all of these three things, but with a specific emphasis on, on the third. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about uh, in depth today about what's possible and how that can be supported within Teams. So when we just zoom out for a quick second and talk about Office 365, this is what is included within Office 365. And there are a ton of icons on here. This is just to, to try to, uh, to open everyone's eyes and broaden the, the concept of what actually your organization's paying for when you're subscribing to Office 365. And you know everybody, everybody's familiar with the Office package uh, with Word and, and PowerPoint and so forth. People are becoming more familiar with the collaborative elements within Microsoft Teams. Some people are still using Skype for business, for instance. But there's a lot of things that are, that are there that people are just try, starting to see the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg with, such as Microsoft Stream, Microsoft Forms. And there's some things which people never see that is the supporting foundation, which is the platform itself, something called the Power Platform as well, enabling Power BI um, and all of these things. So what we do, the, the company that I'm from, uh, which is LMS 365, is that we're basically taking all of these pieces and putting a small cap on top of the roof in order to combine all of this into a learning platform and actually make use of everything that is already existing in your organization. So this is what we call the modern digital workplace. But today's, today's conversation is about Teams, which I like to think of as the digital office. And you might not be there yet, but you can really imagine uh, a, a, a close future where a lot of your colleagues are going to be delivering over 80% of the value for their business within this single platform. Uh, I no longer send internal emails, for instance. All of my dialogue is happening within a team or via chat within Teams. Do you want mushrooms as well? And uh, no? not only that, but all meetings are happening within Teams. Any Anytime that I have a client-facing meeting, it's, it's virtual now. Uh, anything that I need to deliver on based off of those meetings is being delivered through collaboration within Teams. So from my perspective, it just seems like such a natural place to also enable learning. So that's my intro. And my task, what, I'm, what I've been asked to do today, is to simply look at Teams from an Office 365 from a 100% standard stock uh, situation and, and show you how you can take what you already have and, uh, and expand this in, in a L&D perspective. So I'm going to jump over to my teams. This is what my teams looks like. I have a uh, this is my production environment. So I have a, a series of teams and channels up here, and I have a whole bunch of hidden teams down here. I I, I heard a comment about uh, the overwhelming nature of uh, of teams, and yeah, it, it is a beast to be tamed. To be honest, um, it's important to focus on what matters. Um, and, and remove those and, and take off notifications that don't matter. But let's just say that, that that's been addressed. Uh, and then you can organize this in a very, very straightforward way and have what's important to you. Uh, but basically, I have a team here that I've created, which is the hub for the, the L&D community. Travis, can I just, your, your sound, sound, sorry to interrupt you, your sound sounds slightly uh, as if it's coming in and going out of it. Are you using a, a headset with a mic or a fixed microphone? Uh, I have a headset with a mic. I think it might be because somebody is not muted. I yeah, I, I think, okay, so let me just say, if anybody if anybody uh, is on the, has dialed in and is not muted, please could you make sure you're muted um, if you've dialed in, and I'm going to um, just let you get back to it, Travis. Sorry for interrupting. I know you've got a lot to get through. So, so, so I can hear a noise in the background. There's somebody in the kitchen. Uh, we're supposed to have muted everybody. It's not. It doesn't seem to be working. So, if you have dialed in, uh, please can you mute your phone or your microphone? Okay, Travis, back okay. to you. Great. Is is this better now, Don? Yeah. Oh, okay. Perfect. So, 
just to just to recap, we have built a learning center team, and this team, uh, just real quick zoom out for people who who are are just starting their journey within teams. We have a concept of a team, which is typically a functional group or a geographic group, and then we have channels, which are specific subjects and topic topics within that group. So this learning center is something in this example, uh, which would be available for everybody. You would be enrolling the, the whole organization into this team. And then we've created some channels down here. And this is based off of real life uh, questions that I've received from, from people I've spoken with of, of common scenarios. So in this general channel, a common scenario I've, I've heard asked was, how can I have a static landing page for my LND team where I can gather the important information I want to present to my learners. So what we have here is a home page and this has uh, a small video which is uh, is something that we created with with stream just saying welcome to the to the learning center and doing a small tour of it as well as some deep links to additional uh, materials that you might want to be making very, very prevalent to your users. And what this is, this is a SharePoint page which has been embedded within a channel. And the way that you can do this is that if you have uh, you know, uh, the rights to create a new SharePoint page, which I think a lot of you would, then you can do that within SharePoint. And then here in Teams, within Channels, you can add a tab. You can select a SharePoint page and then simply add this page by pasting the URL. So that's, that's how we're, we're putting this home page in here. The second really common uh, request I've had is how can we do this with some automatically generated events? And that, that would be this example. And again, this is just a very simple uh, SharePoint page that we've created here in order to have uh, an events site where people can go through here, see what's coming up. Uh, here we've got some different uh, training activities that are automatically being pulled in here based off of, uh, of dates, right? So, of course, those who have passed would then be removed. And in this format, we've just got four events that you can scroll through, but you can really do this in any format you're wanting to within, within this SharePoint page. It could be a calendar, um, and this will just allow your users to, to have a central area where they can do this within Teams. The question came up, um, which I heard earlier, I think it was about a, a challenge, um, and that was how to do Sorry, Travis. I'm sorry, Travis. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you again. It seems that there's somebody is on a live mic or has dialed in, and they're not muted. And we are supposed to have everybody muted here. And it's we've got a background noise as a result. And I'm I'm not sure where it's coming from. And I can't see on here. So I apologise to everyone who's who's on the call and has a. Um, Who's who's finding it difficult as a result of this? There is nothing we can do about it, Travis. I just have to, have to ask you to keep to keep That's going. Okay. Wait, Sorry. Can you understand me? Okay. Yeah, we, we're doing fine. Okay. Thank you. Great. So one one uh, use case that I, I just wanted to walk you guys through uh, is this concept of breakout rooms, and it's a it's a question that comes up often, and uh, Teams has has a lot of great functionality. And one thing that I think really shines is this concept of uh, a longer, uh, a longer interaction with a group of people. And we could we could take the example of an onboarding. So if we're if we're doing a group onboarding of a number of people and we're helping facilitate that from the LND community, one thing that you could do that would be really great would be to create a team specifically for those users. So how I would do this is down here at the bottom, we have this ability to join or create a team. So if we come in here, you know, I can join some of these different teams that are already in existence, but what I'm going to do is create a new team. And now here you're, you're uh, greeted with a couple options. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to build this team from scratch. 
example. Sorry, can you hear me? Good. Yep, yep. The new starters would not be in an existing Office 365 group. So we say we will build this uh, from uh, from scratch. And you can decide if it's going to be public or private. And what does this mean? Uh, if it's public, then it would be showing up here when anybody clicks on join or create a team, whereas private is administrated by myself to invite people into. So we're going to do that. We're going to make this a private event because this is, or not an event, but a, a team because this is a, a select group of people. So we can call this uh, the June 2020 New Starters. And you can have a small description in here. Um, so we'll say this is the onboarding team. So when we create this, it's going to create a team that will show up here on my left-hand side. I get some nice, uh, some nice encouragement from teams. And then right away, we're going to be able to add members. And these, in this scenario, these are going to be those users who are starting new at the organization. So we can say that uh, this is going to be Camilla. And it will be Ola and it will be Mess, just as an example. So we'll say these three people are going to be our new starters. Here you're able to decide whether it's a member or an owner. And again, in this scenario, we're just not going to mess with this because they are members. Uh, but it could be something that might be useful for you if you were uh, doing this onboarding process together with another member of staff that you're wanting to give ownership of the group as well. So if we just close this for now, we can see that this team has been created. And anytime you create a team, there's going to be a general tab here. And now the, the topic of this, or the question that sparked this type of a scenario is this concept of breakout rooms um, or breakout groups. So that maybe this June 2020 new starter group is such a large group of people that we're going to then split them off and and keep them uh, in different smaller groups but yet still come together for certain sessions and the way that we're going to do that is by adding channels so if i click on these three dots i can add a channel so we'll just to give it a really simple name we'll say that this is breakout one again you could put a description and again you can decide privacy and this privacy at this point is, is within the team. So you might decide that you want to be you know, stringent and lock people in to these breakout groups, or you could say that, that we are you know, breaking out into different rooms, but uh, just like in real life, you could stick your head in the other room and ask something, right? So we, that would be the standard. Otherwise, the private would be that you would assign only specific people who would ever have access to that. All right, so we'll say that we want to have a breakout one, and then we could do the same thing for uh, a second breakout room. But if within this breakout one, then we're able to decide, you know, who should be in this breakout room. And that's if we were making this into a private scenario, then we could assign specific people. Otherwise, we could just decide who will go into which room during the different sessions. So if you're if you're needing to do this as a uh, remote session which we most often are and we need to have events for this specific team as well as a specific subset of a team and you can do that in your calendar so if i jump into my calendar and i say that uh, this afternoon we're going to create a new meeting then we can give it a title and then you can add a channel here so this is going to be an event that's only taking place within that uh, channel of the onboarding team. So if we come in here and say that we want to say that this is a event for breakout one of the new starters, then this is where we would be able to do this. And this will create a, a meeting with a link to the virtual session. And once I so this out, I can also set my required attendees in here as well. So we'll say that in this breakout room, it's only it's only going to be Camilla. But this will also be posted 
within that channel. So if I hop back to my channel, you can see that this has been posted so that everybody within the channel will also be notified of it. You can see here, we're actually already getting some feedback uh, from our new starter mess who's excited about that. And this is what is so powerful about Teams is this, this human to human connection uh, and the power to take a distributed team um, people who, who are not physically together and give them the tools to, to have a real interpersonal communication and, and a relationship. And anything that we're doing within this new starter group, you can decide how long that should be here. So in essence, what you could be doing is starting a, uh, a whole community of people who over the years will always be able to come back here together and chat in this small group and reminisce about starting at the organization um, and actually go back and find any files that were shared at the time. Any chats or meetings that took place there would also be here where you can go in and see what, what was it we talked about at that one session. So this is uh, you know, a real life walkthrough of how that type of a, a breakout room a scenario could be approached within Teams. It's it's different than the traditional method of doing it, but I feel that it actually has a lot of benefits as well in terms of this ongoing connection that you can have with the people that you've uh, you've worked together on this this project. Uh, the new starter example is a good example, but it could also be for workshops for uh, anything which you're you're needing to collaborate over a longer period of time with people. And it's, it's a great way to, to organize that. I've got one last uh, example I want to talk about in terms of supporting learning within Teams using the, the stock options within Office 365. And that's it's a very simple concept. Uh, and it's, it's social learning, enabling social learning. And basically, all we're doing is creating a channel and encouraging people to talk to one another. So here I've got uh, from a previous demonstration, I already had some content in my text field, but basically this is a rolling chat with a group of people where we're sharing ideas and inspiration. And we can see here, this is an example of Paul who has come in uh, with a YouTube clip that he wants to share. And uh, this was this was back in, in April where everyone was trying to to get used to speaking virtually and he found a great TED talk that that he thought was was relevant he just wanted to share that with everybody so you know you're able to then communicate with each other the L&D group is able to let this flourish on its own but yet simultaneously call some people out and make make people aware of things and it's it's a great way also to incubate uh, content and understand what what is important to the community. So anything which is coming in here could then be converted to your own uh, official courses and loaded up into your LMS so that you can then use that as a method to uh, to track these types of activities that that might be more uh, more important. We can see that uh, that mess. He uh, he actually wasn't a new starter. Just, uh, just in case you're wondering. So he, he had also posted something in this, uh, in this social learning area. And what he's doing is he's actually linking into our product, which is called LMS 365, which is just sort of taking it the next step, right? Um, and enabling users to not only make use of everything that we've seen so far and build out teams to support learning, but also enable that ability to, to send official courses internally within Teams and then track and, uh, and report on those. So that is, that is my uh, general overview of you know, stock Teams, stock Office 365, and get, trying to hopefully give you some inspiration. There's so much that can be done in here, and Teams is really not a replacement for Skype. This is, this is more of a platform um, enabling 
all of those things that you're probably familiar with from, from Skype for Business, and then adding on a complete collaboration tool as well. So there's so much more that can also be, be done. We, ha we do have limited time today, uh, but I'm doing my best to, to answer specific use cases and make small videos of those. Uh, so you can always follow me on LinkedIn if you want to see some more of that type of stuff. But without further ado, I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Charlie, who can then talk a little bit more about, uh, about what you can do if you're adding additional apps on top. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, and I should be able to see something. Well, Charlie's just. Well, Charlie's just um, loading up there. Um, we have, sorry, Travis, I think you might need to mute your speakers or somebody needs to. Um, we had a lot of questions there. We're going to save as many of them for the end, so please don't worry if your questions haven't been answered. Can you, can you see that screen? Okay. Charlie, over to you. Pop that one on your end, on, just so I'm aware. Well, it looks like you're watching. <laughs> well, it looks like you're watching the Simpsons. This is all about yeah. element of social, social learning that Travis has been talking about. I think what, um, what Travis did there was it was a really nice breakdown of what what's capable within native teams. Um, like you said, it's, it's more of a platform and it's a very powerful platform. Um, I picked up on a comment uh, that was going through the chat and I, and I must say that the chat is really, really good, guys. But it's, it's nice to see so many people. Um, Charlie, you're Ch Charlie, sorry, you're sorry, very slightly quiet. Could you... Could you no worries. So yeah, and, and like great, I said, I was you. picking up on a few things in the chat. It's, it's, it's great to see how, how interactive you guys are being on some of the topics that you've probably just spoken about there. Um, one glaring uh, stat I picked up with, I apologize, I can't remember the name of the person that put this up, but they said that their, their uh, team usage has gone up by 3,000% um, during COVID. And I must admit that that is a pattern that we've seen um, heavily throughout day-to-day -day conversations with guys saying teams have sort of just been thrust upon us and we're having to make do with, with what we've got. So what Travis did there was give you an idea of some of the stuff that we can do natively. But how can we enhance that? How, how can we enhance the learning journey uh, of, of our end, end users? Um, what tools do we have at our disposal? What, what, can, what can we build in in terms of applications that are going to make gonna make that learning journey even better and, you know, maybe even more compliant? Uh, I know a lot of organizations have, have a need for that. So. I'm just going to uh, run through a couple of couple of um, options here, and, and you'll see my screen is very similar to Travis's. I've built a, a something learning I, center. Something theme, I found uh, out, uh, Charlie, is phone. if you stop sharing and then go into your microphone okay. settings, so it actually defaults to uh, link into some SharePoint to stuff, not your headset. Um, and that collaboration. So I probably sound a lot better now than I did before. <laughs> yeah, Charlie, sorry. Charlie, a lot of people saying that they're finding it difficult to hear you. Um, <laughs> um, I think you either need to boost your... So you need to, you need to stop you need to stop sharing to get into the the overall um, uh, overview, Charlie, to change it. How you do is, is, is this, is this And then the, you the, the you sorry, chap. Then the the chevron next not, to your mic. Well, not yeah, not, not a, Let's just take a second to get it right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Owen Kelly. Charlie, is if you stop sharing and then go into your microphone okay. settings, it Drop actually to the, defaults to, uh, link into some SharePoint to stuff, not your uh, headset. And that collaboration. So I probably sound a lot better now than I did before. <laughs> yeah, Charlie, all right. Charlie, a lot of people saying that they're finding it difficult to hear you. Um, <laughs> um, I think you either need to boost your... So you, need to, you, need to stop, you need to stop sharing to get into the, the overall... Um, uh, overview, Charlie, to change it. How you do is, is this, is this, is this And then the, you the, the you sorry, chap. Then the the chevron next not, to your microphone. Well, not yeah, not, a, not a, Let's just take a second to get it right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Owen Kelly.
Okay, so I go back to that site. Okay, sorry about this, guys. Well, Jen, Jenny, I, I'm, I'm delighted you can hear me fine, but we've got a lot of, <laughs> a lot of, lot of um, people who are having difficulty with the, with the sound. So bear with us for a, just a minute. This is a new one to me. You know, I've been doing this for a long while, but um, I wasn't aware that Travis, uh, your this is a, a tip for everybody. If you're yeah, sharing your screen, it, it does something to your audio settings. Better. Great. Um, and I, I'm. I'm Okay, so by the way, while, while we're doing this, there is an issue with the sound today. Uh, nobody in the room has microphone privileges. Okay, they've been removed. I've, I've muted everybody. So I'm not quite sure why we've got this cross line and somebody else's background office there. Okay, Don, can you confirm if that's, if that's better? And anyone in the chat? Could you... oh, I've, just, I've just unplugged my headset and... No, it's just, it's not it's not better. What we can hear is a lot of background noise, very frustratingly. Now Nikki is saying it's the people who telephoned in. I have done the the key to mute the people who phoned in. Um, I'm tempted to drop the line. Um, what what I'll do is as soon as Charlie's up and running, I'm going to drop the telephone line, uh, and then we'll go back to. Um, Hopefully, just having an audio. Yeah, and I think you're probably right. Let's get Charlie up and running. Is that better? Is it somebody watching Holmes under the hammer? Says Howard. <laughs> okay, it I'm, could just, be. I'm just playing with the settings on my headset. <laughs> well, it's better because you've got it less better. sound in the background. Someone saying. Um, okay, good. Okay, that does make it better. Okay, that does make it better. Apologies for good. that. Okay. A lot of people <laughs> giving a thumbs up. Look, I'm loving all the love in the room. Thank you, everybody. All right, now, Charlie. Okay, good, okay. No, it's not uh, your fault that we've done the rehearsals, my, we've done the sound check, it's, it's on me, but no, let's carry on. This. Okay, so everybody should see that, just wait for some confirmation right. from you, Don, on that, and I'll <laughs> get back to where I was. Okay, good. Uh, this is by magic. Okay, so uh, where was how, how can we enhance uh, you know, the, the, the learning journey, I guess, for um, for our users within Teams? I know that uh, the, the stat that I mentioned was 3,000% increase in the usage of Teams. It's, it's quite staggering, um, but I know that Microsoft are reporting um, massive increases as well. But So if, if users are here, we've got them set up. The foundations are there, as, as Travis mentioned. We're sort of um, building on that switch of culture into learning within teams or social learning, um, what can we do to enhance it? So a couple of options here. You'll see that along the top, the only thing that differs to uh, Travis's screen is I've got a link to a couple of options here. And with LMS 365, we're actually able to embed training within our Teams window. So for example, just, to, just as I hover over this um, chat here, you can see that Ross has actually shared um, a, a, a survey with me, a form. He's even shared a training course with me, which we've got um, as part of LMS 365, all about Microsoft Teams. And I've politely said thanks with this, uh, with this funny GIF. But how does that look? How do users access that training? How do they in interact with it? Well, I've actually got it conveniently got it linked up here. Now, bear in mind this is one example. As, as Travis mentioned, Teams is so flexible in the way that you can um, you can you can uh, manipulate it. Um, I'm linking to a Teams Teams training course here. This could maybe be a compulsory one. Uh, the use case that Travis mentioned there, maybe for uh, new starters or uh, people that have just joined the organisation, you could link to any compulsory training up here that users have to do. And this is not only going to allow it, um, ease of use for end users, but the organization is going to be able to report on that, keep track of what's been done. And if there's any compliance concerns or any things that we have to really, really um, take note of on where people are, we're able to do that. So if I just click into this, this, this Teams training tab uh, within, this, within this team here, I'm going to be presented with a course. Uh, this is a Microsoft Teams course. This could be any course that you've got. Um, set up, maybe you've already got the learning content made, maybe you're looking at uh, building new courses for internal structures, switching from classroom courses into e-learning. Um, this could even be a webinar, uh, online video training. Um, it's entirely up to you. For, for, for ease of use, this is an, an e-learning course. And I can see here all of the learning modules within this, within this course. Um, these courses are made by Microsoft, so they're, they're heavily teams orientated, as you can see. But this could be any course um, that, that, that you may have or may look to, to utilise. 
can see course description, I can see course information, and as an end user uh, in this, I'm actually able to enroll to this course. And this is going to allow me to interact with this learning material without having to go anywhere. I don't have to leave the Teams window. I'm not going into a, you know, another login. Um, email notifications are going around in the back end to let me know that I, I've, I've, I've enrolled to this course. But I can actually get stuck in and do this training on the fly um, without having to log in anywhere else. So this is going to work in. I had to change my password uh, last night, so that's why you missed on it. But as you can see, I can start this course without going anywhere. So this could be SCORM file, this could be any uh, video training, um, any PDF, PowerPoint, whatever uh, format that you've got your, your, your learning in. Um, maybe it's stuff you've already got in a, in a current LMS system, maybe it's stuff that you're, that you're looking to, to, to build as you go. Um, you can interact with it here and embed it within this, within this Teams window. And it really is as simple as that. Everything I do here is going to be tracked and, and traced. And it just allows users to stay in their zone. Uh, they're not going to any unfamiliar places. And, it helps with that, that social element because, of course, we've got this chat area where I'm able to share any courses that I'm doing, as, as Ross has, and I'm able to do that uh, with this little button here. So that was one example of a course, uh, a Teams course, and with this LMS 365 application, what I'm able to do is search on any of the courses that are uploaded within, this, within our um, uh, LMS here, and I can actually share this to the chat. So maybe I've done this course. Maybe I've um, completed this course on Word, and I think this is really, really useful. Anyone within this chat, so this could maybe be sales team, marketing team, however you have it breaking, broken down internally, and I'm sure it's going to be quite new to a lot of you, maybe you guys, some, some others are more, um, more advanced in their team's journey, but I'm able to just say, hey guys, check out this course, and what that's going to do, that's going to go to every member in this team. It's a demo team. There's a couple of users in here, so I'm not expecting as much interaction as Travis is very lucky on his demo. He got some interaction straight away. But for example, this is going to go out straight to everyone. And it just brings in that social element, human to human. Um, you know, it's, it's not isolated. You're not on your own. You're able to share this. We could run through this course together. Maybe Ross and I, Tony and I could go through this course together. It just brings that sort of team environment, as just Travis said, the virtual office, you know, a lot of people are, you know, working from home, isolated at the moment, it brings in a nice, um, a nice team and social aspect to it. But that's compulsory training, you know, we can push things to it, we can put them in a link here, um, we could also ensure that any compulsory training is pushed to a end user's training dashboard. So each user with LMS has this dashboard view, um, they're able to see all of the courses that they are enrolled to, uh, ones they might have not started yet or are in progress to, and you guessed it, if I click that play button, I'm going to be able to go straight back into that course um, and complete uh, that course exactly where I left off last time. As you can see, <laughs> in my, I've done three out of 18, so not particularly good, <laughs> but we've got the option along the top here to filter on where those, those stages. Where am I? Which ones have I completed? Uh, which ones are in progress? I can check on any certificates that I may have got, and I can even download these. Um, this, the, we can pull in, um, you know, uh, previous uh, or maybe external um, accreditation certifications as well. But this, this, this is sort of a learner's profile, and we can do it all through through Teams, which is great. We've even got this element of um, CEUs, which is um, continuous education unit. And um, what we're able to do is track uh, the amount of points that we're getting as we uh, uh, as we complete courses. Entirely up to you how that looks. But it brings in a gamification element, again, social element. Of, of learning, um, to make it a bit competitive, maybe, uh, in, in that aspect. But that's another aspect um, of, of, of where we keep track of our own learning. Um, it varies based on if you're a line manager, if you're, if, you're, if you're an end user, perhaps. But how could we say, um, you know, end users, go and find learning material. Go off your own back. Uh, have a look. Uh, and, and, and we want to, we have the ability to keep track of what you're doing. But at the same time, we want you to do some, some learning off your own back. So. We've got a link to a course catalog up here. Again, this is just going to pull through all of the courses that we've got um, within, this, within this environment. And as an end user, I have access to these. We can limit and change that based on role, based on you know, department, etc. But I have access to all of these courses. So if you see at the top, we've got some highest ranked courses here. Um, I've got all the filter options. I won't draw too much on the, on the self-explanatory stuff. I can search throughout this. Um, I can have a look through it at more courses, but let's say I want to learn more about PowerPoint. Again, I have an open mind. These could be these are going to be all your internal processes, all of your training, fire and safety, etc. It could be anything. 
let's say, again, you guessed it, I want to look at PowerPoint, I'm able to enroll to this course and complete this course without leaving anywhere. I think from doing that, that is now going to appear in my training dashboard, and I'm able to click through it from, from that aspect as, as well. So I guess what I'm trying to say is the, the possibilities are endless in how you manipulate and how you manage um, this and how you present these training courses to um, end, end, end users. But from a management point of view, I know some of you are thinking, well, okay, this is great. You know, we're, we're putting the courses there. We're getting people to complete the compulsory ones or, or go out and find stuff. But how do we I don't know, report on them? Well, we haven't reinvented the wheel on a lot of the, the business analytics and, 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 and the reporting side of it. Um, we're leveraging Power BI for the, for the really powerful uh, business analytics, uh, if you like, from these courses. As this is all hosted and built within your Office 365 environment, the Power BI just hooks in to that information that we've got. I mean, we do have standard LMS 365 templates which we can offer you. Our you know, progression department and these come as standard with any uh, if, if, LMS 365 application. But this is where we can really drill down and pull out those powerful dashboards on, on reporting. We can keep track of where people are. Uh, you know, we can do percentages. Where are we in, in our learning journey? Where are we on our compliance journey? Uh, it's all well and good having the you know the end user fun aspect and the, and the social side of it, but how business is going to want to know how do we keep track of it? So this is how we do it. This is this is the most common way that we use. There is some native reporting uh, built into the back end of the ad, ad, admin system uh, as well, but the reporting side um, uh, is, is run through Power BI. And I don't know uh, in the chat window. I'm sure you'll let me know if you guys are utilizing Power BI already for any reporting that you may, that you may do, but. Uh, there's just a few example templates of, of, of what we've got um, as standard with anything that, that, that we do. But it just builds nicely on, what, on, on top of what Travis was, was, was talking. It just provides a real learning element um, and to it, and it, it brings it to life, if you like. Once the culture's there, once the foundations are, are built, um, we can then lay on top uh, these training elements and, and bring in the courses into the flow of work where we're users. Um, uh, are sitting on a day-to-day -day basis for, if anything like me, all day, every day. <laughs> um, so I, I'm conscious of time, Don. I don't know how long you want to stop for, to answer some of these questions. I've seen so many flying through on, 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 on the chat window. Um, do, you want to, do you want to pause? Sure. Okay. We, we have a lot of questions, but we, we've Probably got two not. different types of questions. We've got a lot of specific questions about functionality, which I'm not sure we're all going to cover, but we may do. We're also right now just collecting questions around some of the bigger questions to do with, for example, integration. Yeah, I, I do my best. For sure. I think we'll go to those at the end. Sure. Yeah, there's, there's I would another, carry on um, for, uh, to, let's say, until 10-2, so, so, so another three here really or four minutes, what Travis was saying and then we'll go to questions. Creating those teams, building that social platform um, to collaborate, share, learn together. Um, but what if you want to maybe separate it or, or take away from that uh, human to human? Maybe maybe like the sound of AI and the artificial intelligence element, um, which I know has been heavily pushed uh, across technology.
element. And build our platform. This point, so this is would be the way to I understand. This with then team so You know, whether or not you are, are wanting to I would if your existing solutions to embed uh, um, those tabs, you can you can. Have Have at that, you know. Of course, the the tabs that we were showing is, is 
how you you can uh, you can add, add it. it really really any any external link into teams uh, uh, but what what Charlie was showing was was an actual built in to the team uh, uh, but Charlie was showing with as an actual app. Built in to the team. So it's it's it really. Depends on what direction you 